In this tutorial, I will show you how to use interrupts with GPIOs on your Raspberry Pi with a push button example. With interrupts, you will be sure that you don't miss any change of state in the push button. So first, very quickly, here is the circuit we are going to use. So we have the Raspberry Pi and then so we have one wire connected to the ground here and to one leg of the push button. The other leg of the push button is connected to GPIO number 16. Okay, so uh, you can see the connections here. Now make sure to take off the SD card when you manipulate the Raspberry Pi and also to power off the Pi. Once the circuit is done, you can just put back the SD card and power on the Raspberry Pi. And well, first, actually, before we write any code, let's understand how interrupts work very basically. So here you have a signal, okay, as you can see, a signal that is, for example, low by default, and then can go to high and then come back to low. An interrupt basically is going to monitor this change of state here. Okay, we don't care about the state here or the state here, we care about the change of state right here. So you have different changes of state. When the signal goes from low to high, you have the rising event. When the signal goes from high to low, you have the falling event. And also change is another signal that is going to be triggered on both rising or falling. So for example, if you have a push button where the signal is low by default and then you price and you release on the push button, you're gonna have first rising and then falling event. If with another configuration that we are going to use, if you have the signal that is high by default and low when you press on the push button, which means that you are using a pull-up resistor, then when you press, the event falling is going to be triggered, and when you release the button, the signal rising is going to be triggered. Okay, and why should you use interrupt? Well, with interrupt, you are sure that you are not going to miss this particular moment. And now let's write the code. So here I am on a Raspberry Pi operating system. You may be on a different operating system. It doesn't really matter. And you can use any text editor you want. I am just going to use for this example here, a funny Python IDE on a Raspberry Pi operating system. So you create a new file. So file new here, so new empty file. And we are first going to set up the GPIO, okay, before we use the interrupt. So very quickly, import rpi.gpio as gpio. So this is the Python GPIO module we are going to use. And then let's say button pin is equal to 16 because that's the GPIO number we want to use. GPIO.set mode with GPIO.bcm. So we can use the GPIO number and not the normal pin numbers. Okay, so we can use 16, which is going to make sense after that line. And then we are going to set the mode for the push button pin. So gpio.setup button pin gpio.in. And because we don't have any external pull up or pull down resistor, we are going to use the internal one. So let's do pull up down is equal to gpio.pud. So we can use up or down. I'm going to use up okay, to use an internal pull-up resistor, which means that when the button is not pressed, the state is high, and when the button is pressed, the state is low. This is important to know that so we can correctly use the interrupts later on. All right, and now what we can do, we can use the first method to use interrupt, which is the easiest one, but maybe not the best one, but I'm still gonna show you that and then improve the code later on you can do gpio dot wait for edge so the wait for edge method we first the pin so button pin and then gpio dot you can use rising or falling or both for rising and falling so let's say that we want to uh, detect exactly when the push button is released. So in our situation, the push button state is first high. When we press on the button, the state is going to low. And when we release, the state is going back to high. 
which means that we want to monitor the rising state. Okay. So this line, wait for age, is simply waiting okay, for this event to be triggered. So it's going to block the code until this event is triggered for that pin. And after that, we know that we can print, for example, button has been released. And then at the end of the program, let's do a gpio.cleanup, okay, which is the best practice to do. So very simple code to begin with. We just block the program until the signal on the pin is rising. Let's save with Control S. I'm going to name this program interrupts.py. And I'm going to run it, uh, so you can run it from Thunny IDE, but I'm going to run it from the terminal uh, here. So let's go to this folder where the tutorial here, so the interrupts.py and do python3 interrupts.py. And so let's test that. I'm going to uh, press enter. Okay, so the code is running. It's waiting for the signal rising. So I'm going to press on the button and I'm going to release the button. And as you can see, as soon as I release the button, you have button has been released, which is printed on the terminal and the program finishes. So it's correctly working. Now, well, this code is good, but not that ideal because this is going to completely block the program right here. So maybe what you want to do instead is just to have a function, so a callback function that is going to be called when you have a interrupt that is triggered, but allowing you to still continue with your program. So you can do other things while you are monitoring the interrupt. So we are going to do that right now. I'm going to remove this. We are not going to use wait for edge anymore. We are going to use gpio.add event detect. So we are going to give all the uh, parameters we need. First, the button pin. So where we want to monitor the interrupt. Then what kind of event we want. So gpio.rising, okay, the same as before. So we could use rising, falling, or both. Then we need to provide a callback function with this. Callback is equal to, and we need to give a function. So basically, once we register a callback function here, after this event is triggered, this callback is going to be called in a separate thread okay, in the program. So in order to give a callback function, we first need to create, of course, a callback function. I'm going to create a function here, def button released callback. Okay. And so when it is going to be called, it's going to receive a parameter, which is channel. So I'm just going to write it here. We don't really need to care about this. Okay, just write it like this and that's it. And in the function, we can do print. For example, button has just been released. All right, so that's going to be printed when this function is called. And now I'm going to give the function to the callback here for the add event detect uh, function. I'm going to add a fourth parameter, which is bounce time. So basically, this is going to handle the physical bounce of the push button. So let's put 50, for example, 50 milliseconds. So this is quite useful because we don't need to worry about the physical bounce anymore with this. It's going to be handled automatically. So to recap on that, you do the add event detect. This is going to add a callback function here that you define for this event, which is GPIO rising for this pin. So for the button pin or in other words, the GPIO 16 with a 50 millisecond bounce time. Now we can't just leave the program like this because this function is not going to block anything. This is just going to register a callback and then go to the next line. And the next line is what? gpio.cleanup and then we exit from the program. So if you just run the program like this, nothing is going to happen. So what we can do here before the cleanup is to actually wait. We could pause the program. So that's not something I'm going to do here. But if you want to learn how to pause a Python program with the signal module, you can check out the link in the description for the corresponding uh, written tutorial for this video. But here I'm going to do something a little bit different. So basically, 
Think about that. When you are going to create this, so add event detect, so with a callback that is going to be called for the button, you may have something else running on your program, okay? For example, you may be monitoring other components, you may be powering on some LEDs or communicating with other devices, etc. So basically, you would have something like maybe a while loop in which you do some actions, okay? So this is going to be your main program, and this is going to be something that is called in a different thread when the button is pressed or released. And so I'm going to write an infinite loop here that's going to run forever until we press Ctrl C. And so in this loop, I'm just going to do time.sleep with 0.01, for example. And of course, import time here. And well, here you could do whatever you want. So I'm just going to do nothing, but as I explained to you, this is your main program. This is uh, basically the main feature of your program running right here. And if I keep it like this, well, the thing is that when we press Ctrl C, gpio.cleanup is not going to be called. So I am going to put this while loop inside a try. So I select this, I press tab to add an indentation. So a try except block, except keyboard interrupt. And I'm going to put GPIO cleanup inside the exception handler. All right, so now what's going to happen? We run this program, we register the callback, we do our thing here, and whenever the button has been released, you're gonna see this function which is gonna be called, and then when you press Ctrl C, the program exits with a GPIO cleanup. So let's save this with Ctrl S, and I'm going to go back to the uh, terminal here, so we still have our interrupts.py, and I'm going to run this with Python 3. All right, so nothing happens. The program is still running, and I'm going to press and release. You can see button has just been released. I can do that another time, another time, etc. Okay, and now I press Ctrl C, and the program ends. If you see that you have some false positives, so for example, you see that the button has been released when you have just pressed on the button and not released it, it may be that the bounce time is too small. So you may want to increase that, okay? Depends on your circuit. Depends also on the quality of the connections you have made, the quality of the push button, etc. And one last improvement is, let's say you want to detect both rising and falling. So basically you want to get an information when the button has been pressed or the button has been released. So what you can do is you can change this gpio.both, which means that this callback function is going to be called when the signal is rising and also when the signal is falling. So now, well, the thing is that, uh, let's change the name of that, button, let's say button callback, just button callback, because it's not just released anymore, just to make more sense when we read the program. And now inside this function, you don't know exactly if the button has been released or pressed. So what you can do is you can just read the button state another time, so for example, if input, so actually gpio.input with button pin is equal to i, it means that the button has just been released because here we know that the state has changed and then else print, let's say button has just been pressed. And I'm going to maybe increase the bounce time here to 100. Okay, so with this code, you're gonna enter this callback whenever there is a change of state in the button, and then you just get the state once to know which change actually has been triggered. Is it the rising or the falling? So I'm gonna save the program. And well, actually, uh, just a small mistake here, it's not just high, it's gpio.high. Save again, go back to the terminal, and let's do Python 3 interrupts again. Okay, so I press on the button. You can see button has just been pressed. I release, button has just been released. One more time, I press and I release and I press Ctrl C on the keyboard and the program exits. If you liked this video, subscribe to get more tutorials like this in the future. Also, check out my online courses so you can learn Raspberry Pi step by step in an efficient way by practicing and directly going to the point. Links in the description. All right, thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial or in one of my courses.